What's up everybody, GenX Dividend Investor here. In this video I'm going to show you where my dividend portfolio is currently at, then I'll show you some dividends that dripped in the last few days, then I'll share some really big news about my dividend portfolio, and finally I'll end things with an inspirational story. So if you're new to my channel then welcome. My goal is to inspire, educate, and entertain you as I share investing lessons from being in the markets for over 25 years. This YouTube channel was started as a way to teach my kids, once they're older, how their dad invests. But it has evolved into something beyond that because I found that I really love building it along with my Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. It's been a total blast getting to meet a ton of new people online who are interested in investing. So thank you for taking a moment out of your day to watch this video. Please consider subscribing to my channel, sharing this video, and slamming that thumbs up button as a simple way to thank me. I'd really appreciate it. And as is my normal disclaimer, just consider this entertainment and not financial advice. Okay, let's jump into my portfolio. So I took the snapshot of my portfolio spreadsheet this morning after the market opened. Feel free to pause the video or whatever if you want to dig into each position. This is sorted by my largest market value positions on top to the smallest ones on the bottom. The first column are the dividend tickers I own, and you can see that I have 25 positions. Well, that's if you still count Disney, which suspended their dividend earlier this year. The next column are the logos, followed by the sectors. Then we come to the quantity, aka how many shares I have. As you can see, Apple is exactly at 1,739 shares because it hasn't dripped since the stock split, which forced any remaining fractional shares to be sold for cash. Then we have the latest share price, colored red if it's down today or green if it's up. Then we have how much the stock price has changed so far today, and that's followed by the percentage change for the day. And then we see how much the stock's portfolio value has changed in dollars, and then we have the market value. The bottom row are the sums, so we see that I have 18,716 shares altogether, and we see that the portfolio is up 0.32% for the day, which means it's up $5,435. We see that Apple is a $200,000 position, Pepsi is around $106,000, Kimberly Clark is about $84,000, and Coca Cola is $83,000, to name a few examples. We see the portfolio currently is around $1.7 million US dollars. The next column is how much dividends each stock drips per year. So for example, 3M drips $3,208 a year and Caterpillar drips $853 a year for a total annual passive income of $51,302 for the whole portfolio. The next two columns are the X date and the pay date, and I have highlighted them in yellow if the date is within a month, cyan if it's within a week, or green if it's today. Highlighting them that way is a quick visual way I can see what's paying out when. So for example, we see that at and T's X date is October 8th, which means it is within the next seven days. Then we see the current dividend yield of the stock, which is how much it pays out in a year in dividends divided by the current stock price. And I highlight them in green if they are 4% or more. So we see that at and has a high yield of 7.14%, and we see that the portfolio's average weighted dividend yield is a low 2.99%. Then we see the three-year dividend CAGR. So for example, McDonald's is at 9.43%, and we see that the overall portfolio's average weighted three-year dividend CAGR is 7.65%. I have other information in other parts of the spreadsheet, but for this video, this is the most relevant stuff. Okay, now let's look at some E-Trade emails I got in the last few days for Coca-Cola, where you saw I had about a $80,000 position, Kimberly Clark, where I have another about $80,000 worth, and Pepsi, where I have about $106,000. I hold each of these stocks in both my tax-sheltered IRA account as well as in my taxable brokerage account. So first we see two emails from Coca-Cola. In the left email we see in my tax sheltered account, I got $348.60 of a Coke dividend on October 1st. And on the right email we see that I got a dividend of $329.08 of Coke in my taxable account for a total of $677.68. Now let's move to Kimberly Clark. In the left email we see in my tax sheltered account, I got $351.69 of a Kimberly Clark dividend on October 2nd. And on the right email we see that I got a dividend of $241.55 of Kimberly Clark in my taxable account for a total of $593.24. By the way, one thing I've noticed about E-Trade is that it seems that your dividends show up later in your account than if you drip with fidelity. I didn't realize this until people on my Discord would say that their stocks dripped, and I noticed when I had the same stocks as them that my drip would always seemingly come 12 hours or a day or even sometimes multiple days later. I still have my Fidelity account, so maybe I'll transfer back to them at some point. It isn't a material difference of time, but it bugs me a bit. Anyways, now let's move on to Pepsi. So in the left email we see that my taxable account got $325.61 of a Pepsi dividend on September 30th, and on the right email we see that I got a dividend of $454.92 of Pepsi in my tax sheltered account for a total of $780.53. 
Now let's look at how those were all reflected in my dividends received tracker portion of my spreadsheet. Now the sold row is what I use to put dividend amounts of positions I sell out of, and since I've not sold out of anything in 2020, that row is empty. But let's say I sold out of Exxon, then I would delete the Exxon row, but I would put the dividends I received from Exxon in my sold row so I'd still have accurate monthly totals on the bottom of the spreadsheet. Also, I made a mistake in my last video. I thought I would hit $7,000 of dividends in September, but I ended up at $69.80. It's fun to see a gradual increasing amount of received dividends as time goes on. So for example, we see that Procter & Gamble had a dividend of $564 in February, which then increased to $601 in May, and then $606 in August, which tells me that there's probably a dividend increase in April or May. Okay, on to my news. So this is a neat video for me to share, as I've decided, or should I say my wife and I have decided, to turn the chapter with our dividend portfolio. Or more specifically, to turn off the faucet of our dividend drips. That's right, we've decided to downsize a bit and start living off our dividend cash flow. Now there are multiple things that are cool to me about this news. Number one, this is a big milestone in my investing journey that started for me in the 90s. There aren't too many things in life that I've stayed this committed to for that long, other than my marriage, though I've been investing longer than I've been married. Over the course of my investing career, I've made some incredibly stupid investing mistakes, and I'm grateful I didn't give up. I've had unlucky times where I've sold out of a position literally an hour before special news came out about a stock, and then I watched it shoot up, and have had lucky times where a random fluke timing helped me do well. I lost most of my net worth in the 2000 dot com crash, which was the most humbling and painful investing period of my life that tested me more than any other time, including the gut punch I got in 2008. Number two, I've crafted my portfolio by design to be fairly conservative, in order to make the cash flow something that's more reliable. So it's neat to me that even being conservative with yield, I've gotten to a point where I can still do this. I think my current biggest risk area is in my oil stocks, so I wouldn't be surprised if in the short term I got some cuts, but I also wouldn't be surprised if in the medium term we saw a nice oil rebound. Now my wife has never really trusted in dividends as much as I have, so us living on the income is a bit of a trial run to help give her confidence that this is a strategy that'll work. So what we plan to do now is to see how our budget fares with this amount of income and taxation, and then if we need or want more income then I'll sell some non-dividend assets and use that capital to grow my dividend portfolio's cash flow some more. As I've mentioned, about 60% of my dividends are in tax sheltered accounts, which means I'll have to take a 10% early withdrawal penalty on the cash flow I pull out. And that will remain true until we are 59 and a half, which is more than 10 years away for both of us. Watch my video called How You Make More With Dividends to show you why the taxation benefits of dividends makes their amount of income way more than an equivalent amount of wage income. The tax code is written to incentivize investing. And of course, once we turn 62, then we can start collecting social security, which I'm confident will be there, but will be at a reduced payout level. I also have a pension plan that I get to collect once I'm 65. I worked at a company for years that had a pension program, believe it or not. Those are almost impossible to find these days, as most companies have transitioned to 401k plans. So anyways, I calculated that given my makeup of taxable and tax sheltered accounts, penalties, taxable income, etc., that we'd be at the minimum of what we'll need. So realistically, I'll probably be injecting some extra cash to drive my cash flow up after we try this out for a bit. Number three, I've never taken any dividend cash flow out of my accounts before to cover my expenses, so this will be exciting to finally do it. So part of our plan is to downsize our housing and transition to a new health care plan. I currently plan to continue to work with a startup for equity rather than salary, and I'm going to continue to focus on building my YouTube channel and Discord and such, and my wife is going to slowly transition away from her job as she builds her online business. You see, my wife has seen how much I've enjoyed doing the online thing, so she has started her own online venture, which is an e-commerce store, and is having a blast doing things like making her logo with folks on Fiverr, which is a stock I'm long in, and having fun learning about shipping and packaging and branding and everything else that goes with starting a new online business. So our side hustles are now doing okay, and thus they will also supplement our dividend income. And the nice thing is that there's a lot of upside potential with digital side hustles. Now my original plan was to move somewhere like Costa Rica and then start leveraging our dividends. But my wife wants to wait a couple more years to see how our income is doing and to let the kids get to various points in their schooling and then consider somewhere like Costa Rica or Thailand or somewhere. She also wants the pandemic to be well behind us before we move. And as FYI, some countries have programs called golden visas, which allow investors to move to them to gain residency, which brings a bunch of local benefits. So our plan would be to use the Costa Rican golden visa program if we do make the move. Okay, now let's look at how my passive income might grow even though I'm not dripping anymore, assuming the historical dividend CAGR estimates hold true. One thing to know about when looking at historical numbers is that they never guarantee a future number. Like just because the Patriots won multiple Super Bowls doesn't guarantee them another one. But a great team can remain great for years and understanding the players that they have and their coaches and stuff can help you assess their futures to some degree. It's not a perfect analogy, but I think you get my point. Just because J&J has done well in the past doesn't mean they'll continue to do well in the future. 
So will my future cash flow income estimates come true based on using historical dividend increase rates? Will Johnson & Johnson keep raising their dividend by around 6% a year? I would imagine they will, but you never know. Who would have predicted a pandemic? So this estimated dividend income data is created dynamically in my spreadsheet. The top row of estimates are how much my dividend income will grow over time if I'm not dripping in and instead withdrawing the cash. Here it's using the dividend CAGR to predict growth. The bottom row shows how my dividend income would grow if I am dripping, which obviously enables more compounding. So this shows that I'm currently predicting to make $51,302 per year, and then a year from now I'd be making $55,228 a year, and then the next year I'd be making $59,455, etc. I've cropped this to just show 10 years, but we can see that if we maintain my portfolio's average weighted dividend CAGR of 7.65%, then at year 10 my dividends would be cash flowing $107,245 a year, even though I've been taking out the cash all along. And we can see below is how much my dividends would be cash flowing if I had been reinvesting those dividends for those 10 years. And we see I would have an estimated cash flow of $151,133 a year at year 10. So it's taken me about 10 years to double my cash flow if I'm using the cash, or about 6 years to double it if I'm reinvesting the cash into more shares. Cool, huh? Okay, now I want to tell you an inspirational story I found online. I'll include the link to this in the story in my description below. So a gentleman was walking through an elephant camp, and he spotted that the elephants weren't being kept in cages or held by the use of chains. All that was holding them back from escaping the camp was a small piece of rope tied to one of their legs. As the man gazed upon the elephants, he was completely confused as to why the elephants didn't just use their strength to break the rope and escape the camp. They could have easily done so, but instead they didn't try to at all. Curious and wanting to know the answer, he asked a trainer nearby why the elephants were just standing there and never tried to escape. The trainer replied, When they are very young and much smaller, we use the same size rope to tie them, and at that age, it's enough to hold them. As they grow up, they are conditioned to believe they cannot break away. They believe the rope can still hold them, so they never try to break free. The only reason that the elephants weren't breaking free and escaping from the camp was that over time they adopted the belief that it just wasn't possible. Moral of the story? No matter how much the world tries to hold you back, always continue with the belief that what you want to achieve is possible. Believing you can become successful is the most important step in actually achieving it. Okay, now I'd quickly like to call out my newest Patreons. So thank you goes out to RTB Fridas, aka Ricardo, I wish I could roll my R's, who just became a Patreon aristocrat. He's from Portugal and is the newest aristocrat to be using my 2.0 portfolio spreadsheet in the beta that I'm running, which is a ton of amazing functionality I've not seen on any other spreadsheet on YouTube, so it'll be fun when I finally do a reveal. Thanks for signing up and supporting me, Ricardo, as well as thank you for identifying bugs and for suggesting improvements to my 2.0 spreadsheet product. I also want to thank five new Patreon champions who've signed up to support me, so thank yous go out to Gabriel Wall, Aragorn18, Pescado Man, Akablod222, Chefmouth, and zero seven. Thank you all, I really appreciate your support, as nothing shows me that you value what I'm doing as signing up to Patreon does. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Leave me a comment if you did, I'd really appreciate it. These videos take a lot of time and energy for me to create, so liking my videos is a simple way you can thank me. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, and consider checking out my Patreon page or my affiliate links in the description of this video. And don't forget to check out my Dividend Discord server. You'll love it and you'll get a chance to meet a bunch of like-minded investors. Thanks, and I'll talk to you again real soon. I am not a financial advisor and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration, and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.